Welcome to a world of pour de cures and technicolor fur coats. He's my little fur baby. <laughs> Who needs kids and women when you can have dogs like this? Where mums and dads... I love you so much. ...spare no expense for their canine kids. Every year, probably about two or three thousand pounds on them, I would imagine. I would give my life in a split second for Mojo. Making their doggy dreams come true is entrepreneur Leanne Couch. I stop when I sleep, but I don't sleep that much. Owner and boss of Mucky Pups, Wales' first dog spa and boutique. This is going to be a awesome night. <laughs> <laughs> but with an expanding family... Four have been a total shock to the system. The word you're looking for is mistake. Oh, my God. <laughs> and a business empire to run. That's fab. OK, then we look forward to seeing you then. This phone is definitely the boss of me, and you know how patrolling I am. Life is always fur baby crazy. <laughs> at the Welsh Dog Spa. <laughs> Newport, 8am, and it's business as usual for Leanne and the couch household. Good morning, mucky pups. Yeah, did you want to make a booking? All right, no problem. Yeah, you can pop in any time for nails. As Leanne feels the calls, husband Lee is busy trying to renovate the house. No rush for the wicked, is there? Me and Lee met when we were teenagers, I think about 17. And according to Lee, the years have left their mark. <laughs> I said, I'm 29 years old. And they're all laughing. And I have to get my driver's license out and say I'm 29. They say, how big was your peak range? I said, what do you mean? You know, how big was your peak range? We've had it hard, haven't you? I said, no, only in the last 10 years since I met my wife. <laughs> oh, you don't mean it. To make life a little easier, Leanne and Lee have given the kids the same initials. Leo, Louis, Lacey and Livy. The LC clan. Well, I was going to have a tattoo, one I? The name, so I just save all the pain. I'll just have initials. It can be all of them, innit? Elsie. Just Elsie. Every little helps. Three to go. And in five weeks' time, the Elsie clan are going to have a fifth edition. Or every time someone brings it to my attention, makes it real, and I'm having a baby, my belly just sort of like turns. And I'm like, oh my gosh, five children. Because I feel like I haven't even thought about it yet. Well, I haven't thought about it yet. What baby? I got a baby. <laughs> this one, and this one, and this one, and the one right here. We made the choices to have the children, to have the business, to be self-employed, to renovate the whole house. It's no good me saying it's stressful or... I'm not going to get sympathy because I bring it all on myself. It's two years since Leanne the mum became Leanne the entrepreneur, inspired by her love for her dog, Lucy. My passion for treating Lucy like a fur baby, like a child, um, was inevitably what led to me opening Mucky Pups. I spend a lot of money on Lucy, obviously. She'll have the most expensive leads, collars, harnesses, beds. I thought, I wonder if there's anybody else who would be willing to spend money on their pets like me. Is this something I can do myself? Now Leanne has 4,000 pampered pooches that come to her two dog spas in Chepstow and Cardiff. This is Milo. I've got a picture of me and him on my desk at work. I just buy everything. Anything I can see, I just buy it. <laughs> it's like your little baby, so you're going to spend money. You want to pamper him, you want him to have a good life. As always, it's a hectic weekend for Leanne and her team of groomers. Busy day, busy Saturday. Saturdays are always crazy. Um, what was his name? Milo. Tapered in a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's about 25 dogs coming in, so really busy. So yeah. Look forward to it. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Sorry, I don't know where they are. They here at the front of the desk. Oh, hi, there's only Mickey Cups calling. Making sure Leanne keeps on top of things is head groomer and spa manager Rihanna. She is absolutely dog crazy. She's got five dogs, all hairless. This is Inca, this is my dog. She's a Mexican hairless, as you can see. She loves her animals hairless, but she loves her men hairy. But it's not stray tufts of unwanted dog hair that's the problem for Rihanna today. Hello. All right, how are you doing? Dog breeder Daniel has arrived with seven French bulldog puppies. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. At just seven weeks old, the time has come for them to be microchipped. Is 
this is fairly nerve-wracking because, you know, popping them, it's like an injection, so popping that underneath the skin. The dogs don't really feel it, but it's just the thought of it. OK, right, we'll see you soon. soon. Right. Bye. Uh, with dog theft on the rise in Wales and each puppy worth thousands of pounds, it's a process these fur babies need to go through. These are quite expensive dogs. You hear about dog thieves and all, yeah. and they steal them and they can make so much money off these dogs. It's always safe to just chip your dog. OK, so this is the first one. We're just going to check if it's a male or female. And he's a little male. Oh, steady on, it's cold in here. First up is Rocky. OK, so we just pop this into the gun. The tiny microchip will keep Rocky safe with his future family. But nonetheless, oh, I'm sorry, I'm it can be a bit of a shock know, for a little one. I know, I know, I know. Oh, Toughen up, go. Rocky. Think about your film franchise. Here we go. Then uh, we're just going to chip the dog now. There we are. So that chip's all in, sorted, and job done. <laughs> Here we go. Chip As Rocky gets a cuddle, <laughs> Safi is looking pretty nervous. <laughs> Oh, such a good girl. You didn't even make a noise. One nil to the ladies. Didn't even make a sound. See, some of them don't. Some of them don't even whimper. They don't even make a noise. And then others, the babies, they, um, they have a little squeal. Two down, five to go. Hey. Nice to see you. As Rihanna battles on... Here we have you take and go and sit down. I'll bring it over now. The front of store cafe and barkery is filling up. People like to get out to socialise with their dogs and meet similar-minded people, and that's what this gives them an opportunity to do. And one of Mucky Pup's regulars is Lisa. Come on, then. Come on, Dora. Owner of Princess Dora the Shih Tzu. So we'll do the med therapy and um, oh, wrap Amazing, there. yeah. I love my dog so much. I want the best for her. So I wanted to find the best place that would, you know, that would treat her well. And it wouldn't matter to them if she pooed or if she scratched or if she bit them in a hairdresser. That wouldn't be quite so acceptable. Lisa lives in Cardiff with her cat Stanley and beloved baby Dora. People think I'm disgusting, but we love it, so and she's fine with it. So I've not been ill and she's not been ill with it, so I think we're okay. High five! Yeah, good girl. So Dora has made such a massive impact on my life that my colleagues in work had this gorgeous canvas done for me for my 40th birthday. I love her little crinkly tongues, just so sweet. Time to choose today's look. This is where I keep all of Dora's clothes. This was her first ever outfit. And I thought it was really important when I first had her that she had a little raincoat and then it's just gone on from there and I think we might have got a little bit out of control. So this was a beautiful Halloween dress. I absolutely adore this dress. And then we got a few more Christmassy ones and a reindeer outfit. And she, of course, she had to have a Father Christmas outfit. I think it was just quite classy and quite minimal. She's my baby. I really, really would love to have children. And I think that probably that gap of not having children has kind of been filled by nurturing Dora as my little baby, really. Do you love cuddles? But it hasn't always been dresses and kisses, Lisa. I used to go through periods of depression, and I think it wasn't long before I had Dora that I went through a period of depression. And I kind of like to think that Dora kind of saved my life, really, because I think I was so... Um, so focused on things that were bad in my life, like not having a husband, not having children, that when she came along, she just brought so much joy. And if I hadn't had Dora, I'm sure there would be so many days that I probably wouldn't have even got out of bed. Come on, you but now Lisa is on the mend and on the hunt for a man. Look at you. I would really love to meet Mr Wright, and I think Mr Wright would have to be somebody that would love Dora and Stanley. I'm kind of getting to the stage now where, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I am sort of getting back out there, perhaps getting back online looking for Mr. Wright. Um, something like that. I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to do now, but yes, I must sort of get back out there. Now I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I think that'd be a good thing to do. Kiss her nose. I don't know whether men would like that really, but I can't help it. She kisses me like, it's like I'm, she's properly kissing me, so I love it. <laughs> Back at Mucky Pups. This is my fifth, isn't it, Em? Yes. 
Emma and Rihanna are still microchipping the litter of French bulldog puppies. Oh, I tell you what, the it's girls, the girls are amazing. It's the boys that are the wimps. So far, the girls have been model patients. Right, man up now, Hulk, man up. <laughs> While the boys have let the side down. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're the Hulk, you're supposed to be brave. This is Captain. Is Captain as ironically named as Hulk and Rocky? Yes, yes, he is. It's a process that Captain and his brothers and sisters have to go through to keep them safe. But even seasoned professional Rihanna can't bear to see this fur baby crying. Hey, silly. You're OK now. Let's get you away from her. <laughs> I feel mean now. This is what I mean. When they do this, I, I feel really... Of course, I'm pregnant and emotional as well, hormonal. I don't normally cry when I microchip talks. <laughs> it's early February and ever the businesswoman, Leanne has spotted an opportunity to promote her business while spreading some love. Well, Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so I thought, why don't I do a doggy speed dating event? Essentially, it's for the owners that we're going to disguise it through the dogs. So it's going to be your dog. Is your dog compatible with my dog? But really, is you and I compatible? So I know a few of our clients are really, really passionate about their dogs. So just that alone could sort of fuse them together with chemistry. Hopefully, we'll be able to pair somebody up and a couple of the dogs. One owner looking for love is bodybuilder Paul Gain, proud father of English bulldog Coco. She's my daughter. You know, everyone says to me that she looks like her owner. I don't like to take ass sometimes, you know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, because I think she's a cutie, you know what I mean? Yeah, but what does Coco think? Paul runs his own gym and is preparing for a competition with his friend Alan. <laughs> Go on. That's me, that's my first show. I was. Uh, 2010. Mr. Mr. Wales first time has come second. Oh, in my sparkly pants. My sparkly speedos. <laughs> come on, come on, push it, come on! <sighs> one more, come on, one more! Everybody who knows me knows that I'm just a big softy. I've never claimed to be anything else. I've got no problem in uh, being in touch with my feminine side. <laughs> you know? Oh, if I had to choose between bodybuilding and Coco, I'd choose Coco all day. If I had to choose between bodybuilding and a woman, then maybe I'd choose bodybuilding. But, you know, I'm not saying which one I might, you know? <laughs> um, but, yeah. There isn't nobody, so... It's just, just me and Coco, so... Hello. Hello. <laughs> Paul has recently split from his wife, Carla, and is sharing custody of Coco and their other two dogs, Luna and Ruby. It's like I get weekend visitation rights. Like, as if, you know, I'm being stepped right for my kids. I, um... Like, when I'm coming back here to sort things with Carla over at paperwork or stuff like that, and, you know, leaving the dogs again is, like, the hardest part, you know? So... Uh, it can be tough sometimes, to be honest. Oh, come on. Since the break, uh, Paul has moved out of the marital home, so visits back to see the kids are precious. Every time of year, this is how the dogs greet me. Who needs kids and women when you have dogs like this? Coco came into Paul and Carla's life at a crucial time in their marriage. We decided to get Coco because uh, my, my wife lost her father and. And I thought, I've always wanted a dog. And I've always wanted a British Bulldog. And I just thought it was time, it was the right time to go in for company and to put a smile on Carla's face. Put a smile on my own face, really. I mean, she is, look, she's a little beauty. She's like a little girl, she is. <laughs> Despite loving Coco, Luna and Ruby with all their hearts, many problems with Paul's gym have driven Paul and Carla apart. No doubt in my mind, if, if the gym was more successful, I think me and Carla would probably still be together because we wouldn't have been at each other's throats all the time over money. But there's no good thinking of what ifs. 
it's here and now that's important, so she's got to move on and find what makes me happy, and she got to find what makes her happy, really. <laughs> See how much she's saying the like. <laughs> <laughs> With Wales's first ever doggy date night just two days away, Leanne and her mum Evelyn are looking for props that will give the shop the romantic feel she hopes will get people and pooches in the mood for love. What are you after? Right, well, I'm, I'm very, nervous. I'm very <laughs> excited to tell you I'm hosting a doggy uh, speed dating event Thursday. Oh my God, why? Wedding and party planner Sarah is soon on board. So these are the two that I'd recommend, so out of these two. Um, I'm going to show you the pink one first, is that yeah. all right? Yeah. Fab. But all the romance seems to be going to Leanne's head. This makes me want to renew my vows. If Lee would be so bloody lucky to let marry me twice, we'll see. Leanne is on a tight budget, but there's one item that's definitely on her shopping list. I won't be able to sleep Thank now with excitement you. tonight. I love you. I won't. But she does have her limits when it comes to doggy dating. This is um, just a sample of the dance floor. Well, I was thinking about this, but then I thought, <laughs> urination, yes. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. We're thinking it, you're seeing it, Leanne. So, love letters, cheer covers, pink sashes. Yeah. That can't be everything. Ah! Just remembered, I've got to get the cupcakes, damn it. So, children, if you're ready. Right, I can't wait, I cannot wait for these love letters, sir. Many of Mucky Pup's customers want a look that will set their pooch apart from the pack. Today, Louisa and her friend Claire have brought Ralph the Pomeranian to Mucky Pup's second spa in Chepstow. Run by Leanne's mum, Evelyn, aided by her Maltese, Fifi. Oh, <laughs> but this isn't your standard cut and blow dry. We're going into a lion again, are we? Yes, please. I love him looking like a lion. And the job of transforming Ralph into a lion is down to trainee groomer Julie. The lion cut is quite short on the body, uh -huh. quite tight. Is that OK with you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then left, obviously, nice and full round his head and his chest. <laughs> Okey dokey, that's no problem. Great. Get him sorted out, he looked like a posh man. Oh, oh I think he's fluffed, me. guys. I see. If you just oh, thought he'd fluffed. Oh, my God, I think he has. Oh yeah, you wouldn't be wafting <laughs> it like that, Louisa. <laughs> First, it's into the hydro bath. What's up, me? Good lad. I think my favourite breed to do is probably the Pomeranian, because especially with the lion cut, the transformation is quite something. He's a good boy. There's going to be hair everywhere. It's like snowing fur. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> the lion is taking shape now. You can see. The big mane. Unfortunately, there's still too much hair somewhere else. We need to do around your winky. We've got to have a tidy winky, haven't we? Yeah, we've got to have a tidy winky. Yeah, two-man job now, because we've got to tidy up his winky. Of course he needs a tidy winky. He's not an animal. Come on, then, Dora. As Ralph plays Russian roulette, Dora is on her way to her favourite cafe to meet a hot date. Henry! Yay! Oh, and uh, Lisa's friend Helen. Hiya, gorgeous. Oh, thank you for me. Good to see Hello, you. Baby. Hiya, hen. Hello, beautiful boy. Handsome. Should we go get all the chinos? Come on, then. Let's go. Come on, then. Here you go. I come to Hampton's every day as part of my dog walk, and the staff were telling me, oh, you must meet this other lady's got a shih tzu because we think you get on really well. It was just... They, they were amazing together. They didn't bark at each other. They didn't overplay together. They were just brilliant. And so we just sort of met up a couple of times after that then here, and we just realised that we were both probably as nuts as each other. <laughs> we bought a little posy of roses. They smell really nice, actually. A little posy, a very oh, nice roses for Dora. And we even put a little diamond on it because we know oh, she likes diamonds. Look, you little princess. With the date going well, it's time to get the drinks in. This is actually called a dogachino. 
Look. Still on the nose. Oh, it's all on the face. It's so cute. <laughs> you are so cute, Dora. I don't, I don't really care what people think of me, um, bringing in Dora, giving a dog a chino and things like that. I think people just think it's, I'm a bit daft and that Dora would never have had this life if she hadn't been with me. It was all over a beard and... <laughs> If you've gone through bereavement or depression or anything like that, having a dog and a cat, not only does it motivate you to get up and care for them like you would a child, but it's also the companionship. And then you have things in common with other people and it stops you focusing on your own sadness and then you're, you're focusing on fun things and laughter is the best cure for many, many ills. Are you mummy's pretty little princess? Oh, don't on the flesh, not on your lips. So I love it. I love oh, you're it. Crazy. It's like we have proper kisses, don't we? Okay. Lisa may get proper kisses, but the body language tells me Henry won't be getting any. <laughs> Are you coming to mummy? Back in Chepstow, after two hours of washing, shaving, and fluffing. Yeah, bit of Ted Barker. Ralph has been transformed from furball to roaring lion. But what does Mummy think? Here we are, Mummy. It's all done and passed. Oh, there he is. Louisa and Claire are clearly delighted. And Ralph? No, 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 no. Well, he just can't contain his excitement. Oh, no. The king of the jungle has marked his territory. It's the day of Wales's first ever doggy speed dating event and Leanne, Katie and Sophie are in Newport taking customer service to the next level. I'm creating like a little chocolate Labrador. I'm welcoming the guests, aren't I? So I can't be a big intimidating dog de Bordeaux, say. What I thought is what better way to be able to share the experience with the poochies than turn into one. So I'm currently a chocolate Labrador and I'm looking for love this evening. Oh, I'm going to get into character with this dog tonight. I love her. Oh, good. Yeah, Sophie's going to turn into a little Shih Tzu, I think. Katie? Yeah. Katie yeah. might be a bit of a Heinz 57. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a crossbreed, just to, you know, keep it real. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sarah has arrived at HQ with the date night decorations. A doggy date night. <laughs> She's mad. I'm beginning to think the same thing. But with Leanne stuck in makeup, it's down to Emma to take instructions. Whatever they do, do not press the buttons on the back because it will deprogram them and I will need to come back there later. <laughs> oh my god. Don't worry, Emma, Leanne's hubby Lee has arrived. Hey, no rest for the wicked. To take control of the situation. Come on, I'll figure it out. I'm an engineer, I'll figure it out. Now wait there a minute, because I'm going to sticky sticky to stick though. Wait here, eh? No. No. Not supposed to do that. <laughs> As Lee struggles with the table, back in Newport, Leanne is beginning to feel the pressure. Get okay, Liv to go and get those cupcakes now, darling, just in case you forget. So it's Emma Jane's cupcakes at the top of the street. I was up at six. Here we go, Leanne, nice and light. I was up at six, um, went to work, and then she was just ringing me every 15 minutes. Where are you? How long are you going to be? I'm smiling, I've no idea why I'm smiling, I don't find it funny. I'm quite, I'm getting a little bit stressed now. Can't say no, it's not worth your life. But hey ho. Fear not, Leanne. They are amazing. Livy has got the cupcakes. Hey. Told you, I'm an engineer. And the lights are on. Yeah. Finally, Leanne and the girls arrive at Mucky Pups. The dogs are in town. Just in time to give Lee's instructions. The DJ will be coming in a minute, so we'll set his corner free, and then we'll leave the tables, the glasses, the I've done the table. Yeah, but we'll, I'll do it again. We'll do that again, yeah? I'll do it again, yeah. yeah. I'll do it properly. So it means we've got an hour and 20 minutes now to do everything. It's going to be a massive mad rush, yeah. You can't rush when you're dressed like a dog. Oh! So I think no one's I can't blow balloons when you're dressed like a dog. Happy days. Next task. Lives everywhere. Lives on the chocolate tables. Pink, yeah? I absolutely love the love sign. I think that is the centrepiece of the, of the evening. 
It seems like the mad rush has paid off. Leanne is ready to welcome her first guests. The girls are just pouring drinks, so drink yourself, Mary. What's going on, you right? Bodybuilder Paul arrives with Coco. She's looking for a rich dog, like two years old, with good DNA. And it sounds like they both know exactly what they're after. She's like a dog on eat something to speak. <laughs> Meanwhile, Henry makes an early move on Dora with a declaration of his love. Poor Prince signature there to make it all nice and official. With everyone present and correct, Leanne kicks off doggy date night. Good evening all, thank you for coming to Mucky Pups. This is our first ever doggy dating event. So hopefully tonight we'll find some love and make some connections. So I hope you can all have a drink, get some cupcakes, and we'll make this even amazing in the doggy disco later on. After the reception, it's through to the groom room for the speed dating to begin. We've got a 90 second speed dating each, and then after 90 seconds, who let the dog say we'll play? And if you can all move, one, two, one, two right. <laughs> right, so good luck, everybody! Yeah. What food do you say you fed him on? Royal Canine. Royal Canine, yeah. Is he on a junior winner or are you on the... Like any normal person on a speed dating night, Paul is talking about dog food. And charming Lauren, owner of Bulldog Cookie. Oh, Cookies can on the cocoa a bit too much, I think. The first canine match is on. But 90 seconds isn't long when you're having fun. Meanwhile, Lisa's showing off Dora's new groom to potential admirers. Look what they did today. Their extensions. The atmosphere is absolutely buzzing, nice and romantic. It was so loud, you can't hear a thing. I've definitely seen some doggy romance, so I'm over the moon with that, because they're a lot more open about it. And I think I've seen some humans eyeing each other up too. It's me and dogs, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> <laughs> While Paul gets working his charm, Coco only has eyes for his first date, Cookie. Thinks it'll be an arranged marriage. Who let the dogs out? But just as things seem to be going well, it looks like Coco's had one too many. Well, biscuits, that is. Coco was sick. Happy days. Can you bag love? Now that is puppy love. With the dance floor cleaned up, it's on to phase three. The doggy disco. Everybody got up and started to boogie together, dogs and humans. It was fab. The jive, the salsa, the conga. If you can't stand the heat, get off the dance floor. <laughs> it's the end of the night, and while Paul may not have found romance, He's still a beat. You know, I didn't know what to expect, but after a couple of glasses of bubbly, I've really enjoyed myself. Doggy speed dating, success, 100%. And Dora and Henry have an announcement to make. We are barking mad, aren't <laughs> yeah, we? we? Are. We've decided we're going to have a doggy wedding. <laughs> As 50 happy customers and pooches head home, Leanne can breathe a sigh of relief. I'm absolutely shattered now. Need to tidy up, get home, and hopefully get at least four hours sleep this evening. But I'll be dreaming about dogs. I always do. Every time there's a good event, I can never sleep. <sighs> ah, dog mad. Dog dotty. Next time at the Welsh Dog Spa... Tyra! ..we meet Tyra, the canine replacement for a long-lost daughter. The last memory of her was so when I bid goodbye at the airport. Coco's medical scare brings romance for Paul. Definitely that day did teach you life too short. And the Couch family have a little addition. And we're back in the Welsh Dog Spa at the same time next week. Barking Mad next Monday at 7.30 on BBC One Wales.